Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitemout.com, Bitemout Live, and Peel Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is uh, Friday, June 11th. This is our second video of the day. We did one earlier today, and I hope you check it out. It has, uh, in it, we did a preview of both the uh, Pandolfini auction that's taking place in Milan on the 15th of June and Rob Michael sale, which starts uh, in about 13 days. It's in three parts. Uh, as always, he's got some wonderful things on there. He's, he's, he's got also got some good Japanese things, about 700 lots. Good auction. And the Pandolfini sale, of course, has this, uh, I don't know if you're, everybody's been paying attention, but go watch the video. There are two lots in the sale in particular that are quite exceptional, uh, that were found in Italy, uh, local collections. And uh, one of them is a massive Chinlung Markin period outside jar vase. <clears throat> Maybe the best one I've ever seen. Uh, it has some repairs. It, I mean, it has a little bit of damage to it, but uh, what a what a jar. So ch check it out. Check it out. Uh, there's apparently only one other, and it's at the Palace Museum. All righty. It's a great-looking uh, sale. Here's a picture of it. And uh, there's also a, a, a very early Yongchen charger uh, that's uh, 54 centimeters in diameter, which is crazy. Uh, absolutely great stuff. So just check that out. Uh, my finger is a mess. And uh, will be for the next few months. Uh, my hand, the, I had the operation. Thanks. Many of you have been writing, wondering how it's going. Uh, it's it, it's it's been a, been a rough couple of weeks, <laughs> to say the least. Alrighty, uh, fingers can be very painful, um, especially when you rip all the tendons out of a bit of it. At any rate. Uh, let's see here. What's going on uh, this week? Oh, uh, on the uh, Bit About Live site, um, the uh, our, our sister site's coming along. I think there's 17 pages of stuff on there now. Um, one of them that popped up was this is very nice armorial charger or a plate turned out. It looks to be in nice condition. Um, uh, you'd have to look it up in the Ayers book, the in Howard's book rather, to see who the uh, uh, the crest belongs to. But it looks like a nice one. It has a faceted uh, rim on it, and uh, it seems reasonably priced, 800, 500 bucks. And also a very nice somatsuki uh, dish. Uh, turned up uh, this week of, a, of, a, of a, flo a lady floating on a cloud with script. These, of course, were made for the Japanese market. This is a really nice Tianchi uh, marked example uh, for uh, $850, which I think is very reasonable if you collect those pieces. And a uh, Kangxi uh, uh, plate with the uh, uh, blossom tree in the center. Uh, it's a very nice plate. It has, it has a hairline or something in it. But uh, it's only a couple hundred dollars. Uh, very, very nice looking thing. It started out at three. The guy said uh, Having a, making a bit of a deal on it. So if you've been looking for one of these, we've seen them many times. Uh, we've seen them on this particular type on Katawiki. We've seen them on eBay. We've seen them at Bonhams. Um, they're, they're a nice, well-known type, and uh, I hope you uh, check it out. All righty. Now, over on um, uh, eBay, what happened this week? Uh, there was this. There, was a, there were two of these plates with very, very similarly done, probably Republic period, uh, one had a wild boar on it, and one of them has this water buffalo on it. I thought they were pretty charming. I like the script on them a lot. Uh, they put in some nice pictures. Actually, these aren't Republic. These are late Qing, looking at that foot. That does not look like a Republic foot to me. See a lot of grit in there. It rounded some iron spots. Okay, he, he sold them. He put them up as Republic, um, he thought. I, I don't think they are. I think they're a bit older than that. And they did, they did very well. This one brought $1,226, and the other plate did, I think, a little bit better. Or, or roughly around the same, very attractive, very unusual, and also they're borderless, which is rather nice, quite 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 interesting. And the uh, brown enamels reminded me quite a bit of Quanjon wear, but they're not Quanjon. But but I think those were very very attractive. They were in the newsletter for two weeks, all right. And then over here to this was this very big uh, late Qing early Republic uh, uh, immortals hanging silk hanging with a Shao character in the center. And here you have the immortals running around the bottom, and then these uh, foo lions and so forth at the bottom of it there. Uh, this was a very nicely done bit of silk. Really, really was. And it looked to be in great condition. Uh, notice there's no pulls. The shading is still very good on all the peacock feathers. Uh, very nice work all the way around. And I think somebody got a really good deal on this. I think $1,525 for that was a fabulous buy. Um, they had it as, as Qing period. It could, be, it could also be an early republic. Uh, it doesn't really matter much, uh, but for fifteen hundred dollars, that was a, a stupendous piece of silk. Um, I think I think that was maybe one of the bargains of the week. I, I, if that had brought three or four thousand, I wouldn't have been the least bit surprised. 
So uh, bravo. Silks is still doing very well. There's a lot of interest in silks. All right, and then there's this. This is something that's quite unusual. It's a, uh, a door hanging uh, done in Kisi. And uh, the Kisi uh, work is, is not done often in this manner. Um, uh, the, typically, the Kisi needlework is done on flat panels, as many of you know, or done in vertical strips. This one was done as a door hanging. And I, it doesn't look to me like they took one and carved it up to make a door hanging out of it. I think that it's a, the way this landscape continues over and the way this all works, it all looks original to me. It looks fine. And uh, somebody got it for $1,575, which I think, I think also that was a, that was a good buy or a smart buy. Uh, and it might have been a little hard for some to bid on because if you went to find a comp of a, a Kesey work door hanging, um, you're not going to find many of them because they didn't do many of them. They're pretty rare. And this is a late Ching one, uh, 18, uh, probably 1860 to 1880, somewhere in there. Very, very nice colors. I love that, that soft sort of salmon pink that they used on these. This is such a great color, such a great color. It's a, make a great room color. Do, do a room in that. It would look fabulous. All right, and then on to this. Another piece of silk is one of these, uh, often they call them altar hangings, uh, with the round dolls across the top and then the pairing of dragons at the bottom, uh, fighting over the pearl and so forth. It's a well-known type. Uh, they made, uh, made they made them fairly often in varying qualities. This looks like a good quality one, and the silk looks to be in nice condition. And uh, somebody picked it up for again thirteen hundred and twenty six dollars, which is about about right. Um, we've seen them over the years. They go anywhere from eleven or twelve hundred up to as high as maybe twenty two hundred if there's a lot of extra added stuff to it. And the silk work is particularly fine or ter very fine. And if they're older, if they're early nineteenth century and older, then they can. They can double that pretty easily. All right, and then here's a, here's a set of Kesey's on gold thread. Uh, this is the more typical way that, that you find them displayed. Here is a gray thread. Here it is with gold thread backgrounds. And you have these uh, 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 Buddhists uh, sitting around, uh, relaxing. And uh, here's somebody carrying, it looks like he's carrying a rake. And, uh, but, but a very nice looking uh, set of Kesey's nonetheless. And they brought um, uh, $1,263. But these are attractive. They're wonderful to hang in a room if you have a room for them. And then the pair of Chinese uh, silver uh, uh, vases. Um, they often refer to these as export types. I don't know why. They're Chinese silver. Not all Chinese silver was export silver. A lot of Chinese was just silver was just Chinese silver, and they made it. Some of it stayed in the country. Some of it didn't. Some of it was shipped out. But it was. Uh, uh, they tend people tend to lump all Chinese silver as Chinese export silver. And that's not really correct anymore um, from what they've uh, done in the research. There was a big appreciation for silver for many years in China, and they began producing more of it in the mid to late 19th century, and uh, it was quite popular in China itself. And uh, this was a nice-looking pair. And I think, they, I think they went pretty reasonably, $1,025 for both of them. They were 8.5 inches tall, roughly, and uh, very attractive. And they had them in monogram. So you could, you could buy these and put your own monogram on them. Take them to your silversmith. Okay, here's the other one. I knew there was another one. This is the one with the boar on it, the running boar. This is the second plate that was uh, like the one with the water, like the water buffalo. Same sort of uh, general layout. But this one has a wild boar on it, which is pretty exciting. Is the back of it looks just like the other one, uh, very nice. Did have a chip out of the side. That's right. This one was, was the one that had a little bit of a chip out of it. Lots of script, lots of calligraphy. This is not a modern copy of some kind. This okay. This one brought a little less because of the chip. That's right. It had a chip in the rim. Eight hundred and seventeen dollars, and that shows you the difference, because this one actually is a plate is better. I think it's more more, more interestingly designed. Um, I, I like the wild boar better than the water buffalo because water buffaloes are fairly common in Chinese art and wild boars are not. Uh, and I thought this was, but the little tiny chip took a lot off the value. But still, nice looking thing, and that's an easy repair chip. So whoever got it, I hope somebody bought them both. Put them back together, get the little chip fixed, enjoy them. All right, and now on to this. This very pretty uh, eight, uh, 1770s, 1780s. China trade tanker with the uh, blue and white border decoration in this sort of, uh, you know, harbor scene, Hong Kong or Canton uh, scene. Uh, nice looking, nice looking example though. Nicely done. Uh, the figures are well done. You see the same pattern um, on, uh, this is sort of referred to as almost a stock pattern. Uh, and, and they were used on punch bowls, tea sets, plates, chargers, platters, all kinds of things. This was a very popular pattern. 
um, uh, among the uh, in the export market in the later 18th century. Very very pretty. <clears throat> Here's the handle on it, and this one looks to be in pretty good shape uh, all the way around. The nice strap handle with the peacock feather up the back, and you have this iron red tree with ascending birds and so forth. Uh, nice looking little cup. It had one frit there on the rim. That's not a chip. That's a frit. And uh, somebody picked it up, I think, reasonably. $360 for that. That's a nice thing. In England, they used to call them cans uh, because of the shape. But uh, very nice looking pot. Uh, Michelari had this over in the London in the UK. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is going out on me on top of everything else. Uh, we just got over an unbelievable heat wave. It was in the 90s here. The other night, the temperature went from 90 to 68 in about half an hour. It was amazing. The wind shifted off the water, and whoosh, and everybody now has a, a raspy throat and so forth. There we go. All right, now, let's see here. Uh, this thing, do you remember this? This big planter was up for sale a couple of weeks ago. Evidently, it didn't get paid for or something happened. Um, uh, more than likely, it didn't get paid for. The, the buyer probably had a, a little, you know, got worried about the shipping or something and, or just decided not to, who knows, who knows why people don't pay their bills. I never understand it. Uh, at any rate, uh, it went up again, and I was a little worried it wouldn't do well because it brought over $4,000 last time, 4400 and it went back up, and lo and behold, it brought $4,524, $4,525. So nobody lost out on that. I hope the, the guy, uh, whoever bought it this time around, paid for it. Um, it, it, it shows the shipping to here for this uh, from the UK to uh, the Boston, Massachusetts area is $120, $180 to ship that. I think that's reasonable. That's a big thing to ship. That's a really big thing to ship. God bless them. If you can ship that for under 200 bucks, wow. Um, uh, that, you know, really, because I've shipped those and we've shipped garden barrels and they can be very expensive to ship because of their size and weight. Uh, but at any rate, that was a nice thing and I was glad it went through a second time and brought the same price because often uh, it might bring 10 or 20% less and uh, that's always sad, all right? And then over to this, this is, it was just a very, very pretty Famille Rose plate, uh, 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 Yong to Chin Long period. I thought it was just, the, I found the enameling on it to be particularly attractive here uh, with the flowers, the way they were done. I found this flower to be absolutely dazzling. I just love the way that's done and uh, 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 in beautiful condition. Very meticulously painted, unusually, unusually so. And whoever did the work down here was also very good. The shading of the blue, uh, overglazed blue enamels was quite attractive. And they used this nice light green um, feeding up to the fresh flower buds, which I think is a good effect. Sometimes you see that. They'll, they'll use a lighter green than a dark green on freshly flowering buds. And I don't know why, but they do. And uh, $128, not a bad buy at all. That's a pretty, pretty thing. And it was shape rimmed and had, had the, uh, the barbs on the uh, inside. All right, and then over here to this. This, I think, was a fabulous little buy. This was a, a nice 18th century export plate uh, with these, uh, these sort of scrolling clouds with flowers in them and all that, and these wonderfully shaped cartouches like, uh, like lotus leaves and lotus, butt, lotus flowers and so forth and lotus in, in the center. Uh, nicely done, had these little pinched corners. Uh, there's a lot going on on this little plate. It wasn't just a, you know, just a, a quickly dashed out, thrown thing from a wheel. Uh, very nicely done. And somebody got this for just $220 from the UK. I think that was a good buy. It was about 10 inches or so, as I recall, in diameter, something like that. I think that was a nice buy. Very, very pretty. And uh, over here to this, for the people that like the, you know, this is a, a late, mid to late 19th century dish. But it was for the Islamic market, and this, and this always makes them interesting. They had some uh, Islamic script in the center, uh, very, very pretty. But judging by the work, I would say the, the, the dish uh, with this type of work was probably uh, done in the, uh, you know, the 1880s or 90s even, at uh, any rate. Uh, but there's the script, and you can tell by the decoration. It's not the fancy, fancy, fine enameling that they did earlier in the first half of the 19th century, in 1830, 1840 where they were re really heavy, heavy, heavy details. By this time, the, the, the pieces were being more mass produced, but it's interesting to see the connection into the, into the, into the Islamic market with, um, with, the, with the export wares still. So it was export for, the, for Europe, export for America, and export for the Middle East. And uh, somebody paid $203 for it. Without that Arabic script, without the script in the center, that's about a $60 plate, but the, the script adds a great deal to the value. 
All right, and then over here to this is Guglet. This was a nice one. Uh, they made these. These were made in the 18th century as well, later 18th century for the export market. Uh, and, and they came in a wide range of qualities. So some of them were, were sort of just thrown together like Canton wares. Others were more like, you know, maybe a Fitzhugh, maybe a little more like that, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, this was a nice one. This was a nice one. It was very nicely potted. The uh, underglazed blue decoration on it is quite good all the way around. And you have these uh, sort of bat forms running around framing everything. Or they, they almost look like crabs. This one almost looked like a crab or an octopus with those legs. I don't know, it's hard to tell what that is. Anyway, I like that. And uh, I like the way the willow trees are done and everything. And I like this outer band. Oh, they did it with sort of big, bold flowers and then framed a lower section of flowers next to it. Here's the end panel. Very attractive. That's very nicely done. It's very European in taste in many respects. And there's the bottom of it, clean as a whistle. And uh, somebody picked this up for, or I think, a very good, very modest price. $438. Wow, that's not bad at all. But right now, China trade, Chinese export stuff is in a bit of a slump in the UK for some reason. Um, they've had a couple of auctions over there, this stuff. And the Chinese buyers don't buy these. So this is all on mostly always, always, always on Western buyers. And, uh, you, know, we, you know, hopefully they're just taking naps right now or not paying attention, um, which can happen too. And then over to this, the uh, Chinese robe with the roundels on it. This was quite pretty. It was a nice one. It was a very late Qing or early Republic example, but beautifully woven. Very, very nice detail. I, I like the red-headed cranes in the center, and uh, I like the, 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 the uh, rainbow uh, skirt across the bottom. It's not really rainbow, but that's what I like to call it anyway. And there's the red-headed crane surrounded by butterflies and insects and flowers and so forth. Very attractive. And uh, it did quite well in the end, about 7300 $22, which these have been doing better and better over the years. Uh, it, there was a time when these would bring about half of what a good dragon robe would bring, and now these are bringing mu as much as dragon robes in many cases, uh, which is interesting. The quality of the work is very, very good, and for a while people were sort of just hung up on the dra having a dragon robe. They wanted something with a dragon on it, so that was that. All righty, and uh, what's this thing here? Oh, lastly was this, was that reticulated wall teapot. I thought this was kind of nice. The guy had sort of a big opening bid on it, and somebody gave it a bid. It was like four or five hundred dollar opening bid. Well, it didn't need to. You could have started this at ten bucks. It would have done fine. And uh, in the end, it did. It did just fine. Here's the side of it. Here, it's beautifully done all the way around. The gilding is a bit worn, but the these uh, inner these open work, uh, you know, double pots are very very attractive as an inner container. Sold for seven hundred and sixty eight dollars. There you go. It got there. It ended up with six bids. Quite attractive. Uh, I don't recommend starting with uh, high opening bids, though, because uh, eBay will ignore it until it does get a bid. And, uh, and if it doesn't get a lot of activity at a high opening price, uh, it doesn't tend to turn up as well as it should in searches and that kind of thing. So keep it in mind. All right. That's about it for the week. This isn't a real long one because I'm, I, I ran out of time today with all that's going on. And um, I've got a million things left to do, and it's, it's, it's almost dinner time here. Uh, at any rate, have a wonderful weekend. I'll be back next week. I've got a bunch of videos that we're going to be working on. Hopefully, we'll get them all out next week, including the one on Gerald Davidson's new book on uh, rain marks. I've been going through it, reading it. It's absolutely great. It's absolutely great. It's got all the Republic marks in there. Now, those are the U-Buys Republic porcelain. I'll get into it when I do the video. But... The new Gerald Davidson book has dates and names and marks of Republic wares, something you, you can't get anywhere. So that's a good thing. All righty. Have a great weekend, and see you next time. Bye-bye.